Hello fellas and welcome. In today's video I will present you one relatively cheap thermal camera, the Weber SC240N. It costs only 250 euros but don't get fooled by the low price, it packs some really nice characteristics. To make the things even more interesting I will compare the device to the well-known Freer C5 and the highly reputable Fluke TI400. So what do you get for a price of 250 euros? First, the device comes really well packed, there was a second cardboard box above this one, so there's no chance the device to be damaged during transportation. When you open the box, you see that everything is protected with thick foam. Inside, you can find the device, a 16 GB SD card, a charging cable, a nice carry bag and a quick start guide. You also find a calibration certificate similar to the one provided by FLIR. Looking closely at the product, I might say that the manufacturing quality of the plastics is the same as on FLIR and Fluke. No rough edges, no gaps, no nothing. Let's take a look at some of the main characteristics of the three devices. Vevor has an infrared image resolution 220 by 180 which is better than the resolution of FLIR 160 by 120 but it's worse than the resolution of Fluke 320 by 240 pixels. Continuing with the visible light camera, Vevor does not have one, at least the model I have, the 240N. The other two models from the same series have 2 megapixels camera. FLIR is equipped with 5 megapixels visual camera. Same is on Fluke, again 5 megapixels visible light camera. Continuing with another important parameter, the frame rate or the image capture frequency. On FLIR it's 8.7 Hz, on Vevor it's 20 Hz and on Fluke on this particular model is 9 Hz, although the same model exists with a higher frame rate of 60 Hz but like I said, this one here is only 9 Hz. The sad thing is that even having the higher image capture frequency, Vevor cannot record video, at least the model here, the 240N. And recording video is one of the activities where you mostly need higher image frequency. From the devices here, only Fluke is capable of recording a video. Accuracy is another main characteristic. On Vevor is plus minus 2 degrees or plus minus 2% whichever is greater. On Fluke is absolutely the same and on FLIR is plus minus 3 degrees up to 100 degrees Celsius and plus minus 3 percent up to 400 degrees Celsius. FLIR has a temperature range from minus 20 up to 400 degrees Celsius, Vevor from minus 20 up to 350 degrees Celsius and Fluke from minus 20 up to 1200 degrees Celsius we know who's the clear winner here. Probably another important parameter is the field of view. It's widest on FLIR followed by Vevor and it's narrowest on Fluke when it's using its standard infrared lens. All three devices are certified that they can withstand a drop from 2 meters and all three have an enclosure rating of IP54. FLIR and Vevor are using focus free mechanism while Fluke features laser sharp autofocus and manual focus. The minimum focus distance is 10 cm on FLIR and Vevor versus 15 centimeters on Fluke. Almost forgot to mention the thermal sensitivity, which is highest on Vevor, less than 40 millikelvins, followed by Fluke, less than 50 millikelvins, and less than 70 millikelvins for FLIR. Finally, the weight, you have to carry those with your hand. It's more than clear that lightest is FLIR, followed by Vevor, and heaviest is Fluke. Something that really annoys me when working with thermal cameras is the long time it takes for them to boot.
it seems that the fastest booting time is on Weaver. Probably I should mention that on FLIR there's a standby mode. Visually the camera is off, but the operating system is still loaded into the memory and this way the booting process is much quicker. Of course, this is slowly draining the battery. Let me demonstrate you. Now we have much faster booting process. Such standby mode is not available on Fluke and Weaver. Let's take a look on Weaver when it's working. The model I have, the 240N, doesn't have a visual light camera. So the image we see is only from the infrared sensor. On the screen we can see the maximum and the minimum temperature of the objects we are monitoring, the date and time battery level indicator and the emissivity the system is set on. The model lets you choose between four palettes iron, rainbow, black hot and white hot. The user can enable and disable the center, the hot and the cold spot markers. In settings menu we have a lot of submenus. Let's open measure parameter. Here we can change the emissivity of the system. In most of the cases 0.95 is perfect. But in case we are monitoring polished aluminium we might want to change that to 0.10. The ambient temperature and the distance from which we are monitoring the object. In temperature scale we can change the range of the device. You can see the temperatures. In high-low alert, we can instruct the device to alert us when a certain temperature is reached. Photo settings, whether the device to auto save. Temperature unit, Celsius, Fahrenheit or Kelvins. Date and time, language, I think we all know that. Display brightness, currently is set on high. Auto power off. and system settings, device information, factory reset, format SD card. Probably I should mention that just like Fluke and Flir, the device is equipped with an LED flashlight. I won't guide you through the various menus of Fluke and Flir. I will only say they both offer better customization options but this is perfectly normal with uh, such price difference. But I think I should mention that all three are doing calibration at some predefined intervals and my observation is that the calibration is lowest on FLIR followed by Weaver and it's fastest on FLU. That short freezing of the image you saw on all three devices is the calibrating time. Sadly, Vevor is not informing the user when this process is happening, in contrast with FLIR and Fluke, which are displaying calibration message on their screens. Over there I have one hot cup of water. Let's compare the readings of the devices. All three of them will be set to ambient temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and emissivity of 0.95. According to Fluke, the distance is 60 centimeters and the maximum temperature is 79.1 degrees Celsius versus 79.1 on Weber. Pretty accurate. Same exercise with FLIR. 76.5 versus 76.9 on Weber. Let's try the same with a relatively cold object. The distance is again 60 centimeters. According to Fluke, the minimum temperature is 6.4. According to Weber, 7 degrees Celsius. There's a slight difference. Continuing with FLIR, 7.6 versus 7.4. Here the difference is smaller. Let's look at some random objects when using the devices.
Well, I think that's enough information for this video review. If Vevo had a visible light camera and better screen resolution, it would definitely be better than FLIR. If I manage to get my hands on the model with the visible light camera, I will definitely make another review. But until then, bye guys and see you soon.